Hi friends, Joseph here and welcome to Home of Sound. We started Home of Sound in this podcast series with one main intention. To help artists, promoters, regular band owners, playlist curators and others in the music industry share their messages and vision of the world. And as a byproduct, we hope that these chats will make you get to know our guests as people and that some of you will also get inspired by their stories, experiences, and work. Without further ado, enjoy today's guest. Irakli is a Georgian-born, Berlin-based DJ and producer who also runs his own imprint, Intergalactic Research Institute for Sound, and the event series and label Staub. He has been around the block for over 10 years, juggling between events, releases, and sets played internationally. And he openly shares how much he believes it is important to create something unique and special. Irakli initially studied architecture and was always attracted by arts. Eventually moving to Germany, Cologne first, and then Berlin, he found a supportive and stimulating environment in the German capital. Through his flat from Staub, he shaped a musical and artistic direction that are centered around the artist's sounds. In fact, both Stau parties and releases are presented without mentioning the artist's names, so that people listen and discover with an open mind. In our conversation, we track back in time his inspiration and love for music, and we explore some of his current projects, such as re-releasing a vocal ambient track by Chikis, together with a remix by Stanislav Tolkachev. As he outlines how he chooses music he likes and shapes ideas into finished products, what strikes in the conversation is Iraqli's outlook on life. He is calm, focused, and propositive. And we talk about how even mistakes are a very useful tool to learn and progress. Enjoy this chat with Iraqli. But yeah, so thank you for being on the show. It's a pleasure to speak with you. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> Uh, and, Thank and you for inviting me. Our pleasure. Um, you, you've done a lot of stuff, of interesting stuff. And now we we're just talking about um, coronavirus and what the effect is, is going to have like into the music industry. And like one thing that is interesting is that now we see that everybody's more home and everybody's like potentially making more music. Or at least they, they should have a bit more time to make music. Yeah. Do you think that is having like a good, good impact on people, like uh, on producers or labels? Um, well, I, I don't know about the other people, how they deal with this strange situation because it's, uh, like, uh, every individual deals with the stress situation differently. And I'm, I'm sure it's a stress situation for, uh, probably 99% of the, the population of this planet. Um, and it's unpredictable how people react on things like how your, uh, um, how, how strong you are, how you deal with the uncertain situations. Like, for example, I was in, in South America when it started here in Europe, and uh, I realized that I was dealing with a stress situation different way than my friend who was with me. Yeah. Um, it also has, has something with a background, because when I grew up, when I was a kid, there was a civil war. Right, yeah. So um, when you experience this kind of situation, you kind of like dealing with this uncertain future. You don't know tomorrow what will happen. Like, uh, does your house exist or does uh, this political uh, side win or the other one? And like, the, so that's why probably I'm more used to it right. kind yeah. of and then uh, I realized that I was uh, acting very um, um, I don't know like very chilled and making decisions like which makes sense but like if you are in panic and stressed probably mm -hmm. you do some some uh, stupid things which yeah. you Probably. never thought you would do before so that's why it's difficult to say, I, I mean, on the one hand, when people have a lot of time, they do less than when people have a lot of things to do. 
Yeah. Um, sometimes I I feel like it's very difficult for me to to have a motivation without any deadline. Of course, you can make a deadline for yourself, but we are in the industry which, for sure, next two three months nothing will happen. Not even like uh, small parties we saw in Korea now. Example that yeah. they started to open the club, but it was uh, uh, it didn't work out. Yeah. So um, that's why it's it's difficult to predict what other people will do. But I do believe that even if people are not productive, it's a great time to rethink, recharge, uh, uh, re-motivate yourself, yeah. reinvent yourself. Uh, so basically what I was uh, saying, what was in, the, in the, this question of like designing your own future, this is what we do actually on a day, daily basis. Like yeah. we... We make uh, decisions, maybe it's a small decisions, but like with this small decision, you go step by step to your future. And, yeah, and, and I mean, maybe the future you are dreaming of is not the one you will reach one day, but this way, this process of like going to a certain direction already brings you a lot of new things because you yeah. discover something new. Maybe you, you see something like the road goes like left or right and you make a decision and then uh, end up somewhere which you probably never think of, uh, of it before. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. It's, um, I, I see it as a journey and I don't know if there will be a, like a lot of uh, new music, but I, I hope it will be. But if it will be, I hope that it will be more inspired and uh, like more personal yes mm -hmm. than it was like maybe last two three years at least in electronic music there was uh, a very interesting stuff going on in very uh, like experimental side of it mm -hmm. but the the ones we saw on the surface it was mostly like in my opinion, maybe like 80% was not that inspiring and new. And uh, I mean, I also think like every uh, music doesn't have to be every time new. Yeah. It should be very personal. Yeah. And I know what you mean. Like it's, mo it's almost like if, um, if everybody's trying to do the same thing at the same music, like yeah. eventually like it's very hard for us to see who people really are. It's like, I I'm pretty sure that like if everybody did, whatever the fact they wanted with music, not everybody would be successful eh? or it would yeah. take more time for them to find who likes their music. Yeah. But we would see really like amazing stuff happening. Right? Yeah. If everybody's doing the same thing, it's like, it's almost like we're all converging to the same, to the same things yeah. every time. I'm, I'm not saying that there was not uh, uh, enough interesting stuff going on, even in the same small, uh, uh, small genre of music but the problem is that um i think people tend to go like easier way yeah mm -hmm. and when they see like um oh this was successful so i go that direction because this is way more easy okay. but uh art is never easy yeah yeah and I mean, maybe on the surface it looks very easy, but there is a lot of, a uh, lot of ideas, a lot of uh, tries behind it, a lot of um, research. Um, something very simple can can be done in maybe five minutes, but maybe it took like five years to reach that point to make it in five minutes. So. Super interesting point, and and I think that's something that we don't necessarily see all the time. Yeah, and I think the social media are exacerbating that because you only see the selected best part, final part of someone's success or work. Yeah, you don't see the, the amount of time that it took them to shape that sound or to maybe to come up to that decision. All the failures that came from that, maybe the ten years that they were sitting in a room alone, studying, studying piano and doing beats. We don't yeah. see that. And we don't see it, and also we don't. Uh, nobody's talking about their mistakes. Uh, 
uh, about their failures. And if you don't do mistake, you will never grow. 100%, yeah. And uh, this is what I think for the, the new generation, it's a very good inspirational thing to say that don't be afraid to make a mistake because yeah. without mistake, you won't grow and you cannot uh, stay in the same place. Like you have to grow up, you, uh, your sound should develop or change or... Uh, Maybe it gets more simple, but you know exactly what simplicity you need. So this is the, um, uh, without mistakes, without uh, failures, it's impossible to to go to the next step. Yes, for sure. And if I asked you, like, what is a mistake that uh, it actually made, that made you grow massively, when you look at it back, you're like, fuck, I'm so glad I made that mistake. Um... It's a very good question. I have to, I uh, I had to think about it. Uh, probably probably a lot of things which I've done uh, more like I cannot now I I don't have any example proper yeah. example but like there've been a lot of times that um I I said yes to something. Mm -hmm. Because I thought like, oh, it's easy and it's uh, it's a nice person, and uh, but then then I don't like to say no once I promise something, and then you end up somewhere where you are not happy with the result or the process you are doing. But at the end, I try to finish this because I want to keep my promise and do the best out of it. Uh, that your name is not misused for something. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes it takes way more en uh, energy and uh, uh, time to, to manage that in a way that you are happy uh, to put your name under it. So I think there have been a couple of, couple of times this kind of stuff, especially like when i done some artworks and then you think like, oh, it will be easy and cool. And then you end up something like you are not happy. Mm -hmm. The process was terrible. Uh, uh, you realize that with this person, like it doesn't mean that this person is a bad person or something, but like you cannot work together. It's, uh, you have a different uh, um, ideas or like different ideas different mindset up and different vision what you want to do and the other people have different visions and i think you also learn over the time to say no when you from the beginning something in your background tells you okay everything looks pretty nice but like something is wrong and then with your experience, you start to think like, what can that be? Is it like something personal? Is it something connected to the work or uh, the the way of thinking? All this kind of stuff makes uh, makes a difference at the end. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and yeah, uh, good point also. Like the, the experience is also what will uh, will trigger a pattern in your in your mind, and you start thinking, okay, yeah, I recognize that, it. Like mm, something doesn't. It's not gonna work. So, uh, for example, there was like uh, events we've done a few years back with my friend and uh, there was like this, this guy who was playing at the parties and he was really nice. He's a really nice person, but like at the end, because of the, some communication problems, it became a mess, like a big mess of some... Uh, some things which was not clear at the beginning because we thought we are on the same level and think in the same way and it's it ends up like with bigger bigger mess than you can ever imagine and then i started to reflect like what what we have done wrong like what i was not paying attention and then one after one things came up which i was like oh that was strange. Why well, didn't pay attention to that statement or to that thing? And after that, when, when these kind of things happens, this pattern works in your uh, brain like, okay, there was this thing. So maybe I should think again one, one more time before I say yes or before I go to that direction. Sorry, sorry. This is, yeah. 
that, that would probably come yeah, sorry go yeah. ahead so it's nothing specific to uh, like uh, music industry or or DJing or musicians. It's in general specific to the to the brain and how you work and what what you want to reach. Because I don't like stress. Like I want to do things which which is fun, which makes me happy, which makes other people happy. Yeah. And even if it's one person out there in this planet who enjoys that then you have done good job so awesome. yeah. yeah and well wow, there's, there's so many questions that i would love to ask but i think um one thing that, that strikes with, with what you just said is that the you have you seem to have like a purpose like in what you do like in, in the music you do you do that with with, uh, with some kind of purpose uh, that fulfills you when you put it out yeah. like do you remember, do you first of all like do you think about yourself as a producer first or as a dj first or something else um well a few years i was thinking like that actually i'm more dj than uh, than a producer mm -hmm. uh, but everything started like itself like i never planned to be a dj i never planned to open the uh the label so it, it just happened like at one one point you played so much that people start to invite you and <laughs> getting like more and more serious and then at one point i met Jakub, and we decided like okay why don't we release by ourselves because we have some material and we don't want to start writing the labels and uh discussing with them and we didn't even know how that uh, that works yeah so we decided to release by ourselves so then that was successful and once you start releasing <clears throat> first we released ourselves then then we had like friends we thought like oh their music is amazing let's give them a platform and then it started for me like even when we stopped iy uh, I already had the new label and it's like addiction, like a buying records. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like when you, when you hear new record, uh, and you like something, you just buy it because you, your mindset is like, okay, you are addicted to, to this and you buy it. And I realized, I think this year or last year that releasing music on the, on the label is the same. Yeah. Because uh, the most I, I enjoy doing a label is that you constantly listen to new music or meet new producers and have exchange and constantly thinking about like, oh, what can be the ne next release? Yeah. And oh, the, the music of this person is amazing. So maybe there is a concept which fits to the label and uh and then then i start to think about the different scenarios to work with a certain artist and sometimes it's a compilation where you think like oh for this compilation that guy is the perfect match or or uh, the next release on on uh, on my label is uh it's uh, seven inch uh-huh so I'm waiting for the for the inlay cover now. Yeah. So for for Bandcamp, I will do in this kind of uh, packaging. Yeah. Packaging. That's for Staub. No, it's for Intergalactic. It's wow. a, a track of Chikis. She's like a singer songwriter kind of person doing uh, like using like very very old drum machines. Like mm -hmm. I never saw this kind of drum machines. And um, I discovered this song. I, I, I mean, it's something like she's singing, and I don't know how to call it track or song. <laughs> okay, I don't know. I found it like three, four years ago, and I listened to it like on the loop. It was a digital release on uh, Not Not Fun. It's like US, pretty interesting label. And after that, I was always impressed from this person, her. I saw her at, uh, playing a live set and then we invited her at Staub uh, in February. And when she was there, I talked with her like, hey, maybe we should do seven inch, like, uh, because seven inch is a good format for this kind of like vocal, more dreamy. It's like ambient track, 108 BPM or something. And 
and I ask her if she has something uh, similar to that that track. Got it. And yeah. she's like, "Yeah, why don't you uh, reissue that track because it was released only on digital?" And I was, I could not be more happy because this is one of my favorite tracks of last three years. Wow. And then I asked Stanislav Tolkachev to make a remix. So uh, he he made two remixes. One will be on the B-side and one will be digital. Yeah. So this is uh, like to, hear, to have this kind of stories because you, you, you treat music in a different way. It's uh, giving that this packaging and uh, working on, on uh, artwork and giving its deserved focus to right. this track this is what what makes me happy yeah it's and uh, yeah yeah it's a beautiful thing like you you're creating a, a product that it's an arti form of artistic expression i think it's, it combines a lot of different stuff yeah this music side that is the relationship with other artists that there is the like i don't know i don't know if it's the same for you but like when i am about to release something i feel that kind of buzz of like what are who is gonna hear it and be like, wow, yeah. this is cool. Yeah. You, know, you, you yeah. imagine like someone who's gonna pick it up, maybe on the other side of the world, they'd be like, wow, you made my day, you know? It's a yeah. beautiful thing. Some, some people probably knew the original track, but then they rediscover and, uh, or want it on the vinyl. The others will love the Tolkachov remix. And so, so you open the, you, you respect the, the, the music. I think the what labels should do, they should release with more respect and with more. Uh, I mean, I don't want to teach anyone to do what, whatever they do, but this is this is my way to do, uh, deal with it. So I cannot separate DJing, releasing music, it, yeah. making bands. It's it's like a part of the the whole thing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. And in 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 in. in I'm really interested in your origins as a, as an artist. Like, okay, so you you come you come from Georgia originally, and yeah. uh, until what age did you live in Georgia? I think till I was like 23 or 24, something like that. You you mentioned before there was a civil war back then. Yeah. So you were what age when the civil war was? Uh... Oh, well, I think I was like 10, 11, or something, wow. and. Uh, then there was like 90s with like uh, the crazy time after civil war uh, with uh, like three, uh, three, four hours a day electricity. And we were li listening to the you know, Walkman with uh, batteries and there was some radio station uh, uh, putting like some really interesting like funk and uh, jazz and stuff like that with like some nerds doing that that uh, uh radio shows in some like small offices somewhere around the city and they had uh, uh the generators to have the uh electricity uh so the, the, this kind of like also music was very difficult to get because there was no market kind of yeah. wow. so you had to be like uh lucky to have some friends who are traveling or their parents or something to get some cd like to to have a cd of cocteau twins was something like you are the biggest nerd of this country to have this kind of stuff wow. even cure was like impossible to get because it was not uh, maybe for eastern uh, western europe and us it was like a pop music but there was maybe like at night at three o'clock, there was some MTV shows or something, but that's it. There was no other information. Crazy, crazy stuff. And, and what would you do? So eventually, so you, so you're 11 when there's civil war and then you grow up, you're a teenager when there is a, the 90s revolution things, you started to get access to some music, it's restricted. Yeah, I mean, at some point, internet started to come come, come in, and then uh, it was more developed, and then you started to get more information. Yeah, and then I was lucky because I was studying architecture, so I uh, had like from the beginning on, like from my teenager times, the, the the contact with all these like artistic people, and they had their own networks, and some had like interesting music, and then somebody had an interesting book, and stuff like that. Wow. So 
yeah, this was, uh, um, then I finished my architectural studies and then I wanted to go to London, but the post came really late that they accepted. Like I, I got accepted to uh, Barclay School of Architecture or something. I had to go for the interview. Yeah. But the post came like months later because Georgian Post was like fucked up. <laughs> and that's why uh, how I ended up in Germany because my friends were in Germany and then right. they told me like, okay, you can try here to study. Uh, and uh, wow. then I started to learn German and uh, I came to Germany. So this is how things happen. And that's why I ended up in Cologne because the school I was uh, I wanted to study was in Cologne. Yeah. And um, actually, from that time, I started to go to the parties and uh, met some friends, and then start to exchange and uh, buying records and all that <laughs> things. And then things happen. And then so, and you met you met um, Jakub, who was your Former Jakub, I met, I met in Berghain uh, when I moved to Berlin, like 2010 or 11, because we've been like group of like people going like every weekend there. And uh, like that time I knew almost like every second track anybody was playing. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, and I think like also the techno, like new techno was not that oversaturated with that many releases. So it was more easy to go through all these new releases and uh, labels. Yeah. So we've been like friends of like five, six people being there every weekend, staying there like till the end and uh, checking everything and uh, knowing almost every second track. Uh, so that's how we met and then uh, yeah I think like spont uh, I had to record some podcasts for my friend my turntables were not working that's why I went to his place yeah and that's where we tried to produce something together that's how we uh, then we were like happy with it and continued doing that that's pretty cool and you so I, I as far as I, I remember I think 2013 was your first release together with us I was yeah and that yeah. was when you, you, you started your own... No, I think 2012. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think 2012 was first release. Yeah. How, how long did it take for you guys to, to go from, hey, let's sit down and do something together to we release something? I think uh, maybe one and a half years before yeah. the, we were holding our record in our hand. That's pretty fast. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, the tracks were ready before, but it's, you know, like, uh, you're not experienced, you uh, try to press it here and uh, to yeah. do that distribution, and then it takes longer than you expected, but then the feedback was really amazing, so that's why we continue doing it, and uh, right, yeah. there was some sometimes, like, uh, it took, like, we were ready with the uh, release, but it took like more than six, seven months to to have it out there. Then we changed the distribution, then we changed the this and that, and then uh, now end up like, I know exactly where to press and how to communicate with people. And this is all the experiences. I mean, I don't even know, I, you cannot even tell somebody because everybody uh feel comfortable like for example for me the artwork and the material and how to deal with the pressing plant that the quality is good at the end is more important for somebody it's more important they don't care about the artwork and and the material they they care that it's only a good so yes everybody should find out their own way i think how how to deal with this kind of these kind of things yeah, but um, yeah, it, it was a process. Yeah, of course, and it, it takes time also for for uh, for you probably to understand what you like, where you are good yeah. at. And, yeah, and who was so uh, so that's around 2012, 2013, and you guys released on your own label or was on someone else's label? Well, uh, first we released I think like three releases or four on our own label, and then. Some labels started to ask us to to release, and there were, there was Fracture. Fracture, yeah. Uh, uh, we released two EPs on Fracture. The idea was like one side is original, one side is uh, remix. 
But on the second release, we uh, asked Inigo Kennedy and both agreed. That's why label decided to put like two remixes on the B side. So was it Inigo Kennedy and then what was, who was the second one? I, I didn't Headless know. Horseman. Oh, okay. I mean, nice. Yeah. Yeah. So then there was a dynamic reflection release. We made like uh, two original tracks and acronym made uh, two remixes. And then there was a lot of uh, uh, various artists, like uh, some friends were doing some various artists and uh, yeah. done some, we've done some, some uh, uh, remixes and... Um, Got it, yeah. And, and, and so, and you're, at the same time, so around 2013, you started Staub. There was a... Yeah. 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 So we should... So first we started the parties called Moments. It was... Before we released the EP, uh, like before we released the first first uh, release on the label, because uh, a friend of us started this club called Raum, mm -hmm. and they invited me to play at the opening. And that time, me and Jakob started to produce, and I asked them like if we can play back to back, just with a new project. So. Cool. When we arrived there, it was amazing. Like the, the club was exactly like you imagine nineties in Berlin. Everything was a bit fucked up, but like good sound. And um, <clears throat> so we made, I think like four or five events there. Then the club closed because it was not legal and uh, everything was not uh, <laughs> properly done. Um, but during that party, some people from about then came. Right. And they loved the atmosphere that uh, like one, one event where was done with uh, some people who were working for about like, they asked us if we want to do something together. And that's how we came up with this Staub idea because they wanted to do some daytime party, but uh, yeah. it didn't work out before, even the, there are enough people in Berlin, but then with the right concept and right, right attitude, it, we started very small with one floor with 100 people, but over the time it grew and grew. And then uh, like yeah. before, before shutdown, we had three floors and- uh, That's pretty cool. You know, 700 till 1000 people in the winter editions and uh, which is pretty good, good, uh, amount of people maybe a bit too much for for my <laughs> uh, uh, to do it during the day and without announcing the lineup. But yeah. uh, it, it's super interesting. I, I think I've been in at least two or, or maybe three times in Berlin during the um, the August parties. So when uh, about Blank has the garden, it's just like it's a magic experience. It's beautiful. Yeah. And yeah. like, how did you come up with the idea of like not putting names on the lineup? Well, I think uh, when you start something new in the, the, in the context which is existing, uh, you have to have something special. Mm. Like whatever it is, uh, you have to stack on that. And if you think this is the right, right thing, uh, you have to follow that. And I mean, there've been a lot of people who uh, promote us to start something interesting, but it doesn't work in a few months. Right, yes. So that's why the concept should be in a way that, I, I remember one or two years we were coming home after the party, we didn't even have the money for the cab to, to pay well, um, because we paid the club and we paid the artists and, uh, and the people at the door and then nothing is left, but the party was so good it was giving us so much that I was like, hey, it's, it's, it's amazing to have this opportunity uh, to invite people you like, uh, to, to build up something like a community. And uh, we were going out anyway. So we, we were ha having fun for free at the end. In a way, yeah, you, it's a good framing. It's like you, you're not losing money. You're actually, it's yeah. a free party. Yeah. Uh, so it started uh, uh, without any commercial interest because we wanted to build up the community. When it grew, then uh, we decided like, okay, every time we have a donation box and after every party we decide where to donate because everybody who was on the guest list was donating the, 
uh, uh, some money. And uh, we helped our friends in Portugal. They are doing this, uh, uh, planting the trees and uh, following that, like, uh, it's not just like putting the tree somewhere, but they, they also live there and they take care of it. And I don't know, like uh, they already, have like more than 2,000 trees they wow. planted. So we helped them and then we helped some friends who had some, some, uh, some problems or some refugee families who had to pay for like lawyer fee or something like that. Wow. So it, and it gives you an opportunity. I mean, now like uh, the summer months was always uh, uh, full, but we will, would keep it for like record release because if you do like split color with the cover and everything, like uh, then it should be like 15 euros. If, if, if you want to get money back, it will be like 15 euros to sell. Yeah. But we're putting for 10 or something because uh, you balance it from the, from the donation, from, from the, some, some money which is left. Because I don't think that for DJs like, 20 euros more or less don't change that much, but uh, then you have a record to give them for free. And uh, you support the new artists which you are releasing on the, on the EP. And so it's kind of like a um, system built, we built up our system, how to deal with the different things. Yeah. <clears throat> it's amazing because the, the two things support each other. So you have, you have the label, you have the, Maybe you have the community, you have people you are supporting outside of the community, your, your friends yeah. in Portugal, uh, and you have the party where you, it's the moment where everything comes together. And that, yeah. in a way, supports your continuous yeah, work label. Exactly. Label supports the party in a different way. Yeah. The party supports label because we sell the records and we have our network. And there is a big network of... Uh, very talented DJs and producers, and uh, it's fun to to find new people to have this like uh, 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 cruise all around the world where you have like certain connection where they think your concept is very interesting, and uh, we do something together sometimes in their club or sometimes somewhere else, or they come to to Berlin. So it's, it's, yeah, it it's, makes, it, it's, it's fun. And uh, we also like the, the most important thing I think is that the team we have, like we never had any problems with each other. It's like, of course there are something like somebody is not happy with, uh, with uh, this and that, but like, then we talk about it and we find a solution and uh, there is nobody's ego at the front. Um, I think this is uh, very important, especially like artists should have an ego because you, uh, you go out there and you, you are kind of like naked. Yeah. People see, uh, how you think, what you think. And, uh, today with social media, every, everybody's showing everything. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have to have something like, okay, I, I'm worth it to show it to the others, but it should be uh, healthy, healthy yeah. ego, yeah. like which is doesn't which doesn't uh, destroy the others or like suppress. Yeah, the others. yeah, yeah. So I think less ego, more interesting is uh, the outcome. I think so, um, but. Yeah. This is nothing, nothing to do with like a music industry, especially it's, it's like human, human thing. Like everybody has these thoughts of like doing this way or that way. And uh, of course, like uh, nobody can predict, like if somebody will offer you a uh, hundred thousand for a shitty gig, then probably you will sit down and think like, okay, this is a shitty gig. I will never do it, but like it's hundred thousand. Maybe I can do 10 amazing projects out of it. Yeah. Uh, so depends like step by step, you have to make a decisions and this is the whole process.
100%. Who is in your team? And the interesting part would be like, also like, how did you get together? How did you find uh, this way of working? Well, I think we are all friends and we, we uh, met each other because we all had like same interests, like uh, on the human level as well, but also on the music level or also like understanding what we want to do and how we want to do it. Um, so in, in, in general, like the mindset was the same, but it was uh, ev everybody we work together, we are kind of like friends or friends of the friends. Right. And we knew each other before we started something. Like it was not randomly uh, a random thing. And yeah. I, I think it's also for, for the label, it's very important to know the artist also personally. Um, <laughs> want, yeah. It, because it's important for, for me personality is very important like uh, uh if somebody's an asshole i cannot release their music <laughs> i makes sense i mean like i mean in the end it's like it's a relationship like same way as it would be for a love relationship for your flatmates if you want to work with people long term yeah. it's yeah. you need to kind of work with each other it doesn't make them necessarily bad people if you are not good together yeah but you need maybe, to be, you know. maybe this person looks amazing but if if there is no common interest or you right. think in the same way the relationship would not work so yeah. it's the same with with this kind of thing like maybe somebody's making amazing music but if you are on the completely different uh, uh mind setup like i don't blame anybody who wants to make a lot of money and uh, uh, do like some cheesy stuff just because it's successful. I cannot do it. Uh -huh. And I cannot release this kind of artist because it's not the way, I'm not saying that this is bad or good. I'm saying this is not my way of doing things. Got it, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it makes sense. And wow. and. and Interesting. I'm really interested, like, so on the label side, now you're working at Staub, the particular side of it is also, you don't mention the artist's name. Yeah. So it's super interesting because in a world where social media is the dominant way that people communicate, promote themselves and their music, like, how do you make sure that nobody on the release will make, like, can say, oh, this is, can claim it, you know? <clears throat> um, actually, when people play at the party, yeah. Uh, they always ask like, oh, can I, can I post it or not? And we decided at one point, like, okay, it doesn't make sense to, uh, to tell people like, okay, you are not allowed to say it and stuff like that. So we decided, uh, uh, the, 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 the way that artists can decide themselves if they want to post it or not. So there are some artists when they release and it's the same same thing with the uh, release like mostly like everything we've done like uh Staub releases there was like four tracks yeah and there was various artists so there are like four different artists and uh some of them are like more famous or like doing it 20 years or 30 years and others it's the very first release or second release so the chance that you even you are like uh, in the middle of, uh, you know, like, you know, a lot of DJs, you know, a lot of uh, promoters. Yeah. And the chance that you would know all four uh, artists who released there. Yeah. And you saw each of them saying like, okay, this is my track. The chance is like 1%. Yeah. Literally. So most <laughs> probably you would know one person of them. And you would know only one track, which is from this producer. Yeah. But you will never know like all four. The chance is very small. Yeah. It's the same with the event. Like oh, there are 10 DJs playing. If somebody knows two of them, they will know two out of 10, but they still don't know eight other DJs who are playing. Yeah. Which is super interesting because also like it, it makes sure that people get there for the music, right? without so it's, it's not about the name necessarily exactly it's it's about music and uh they are like i think 
I know there are like a lot of Staub regular guests. They know me. Yeah. But they don't know my DJ name. Because a lot of people, they come and enjoy, but they are not coming to DJ to see like, oh, who is, like, of course, there are these kind of people as well. And they exactly know who, who is who, and they check the timetable at the party. But a lot of people, they just enjoy the music. For sure. Yeah. And for the, for the EP, it's even more important because... Like, uh, uh, I always say this as an example. Like, I have a lot of friends who would say they are the biggest fans of uh, uh, Affix Twin. But, uh, and if Affix Twin will make a new track, everybody will freak out, right? Like, oh, did you hear the new Affix Twin? <laughs> so if, if I would send the same track yeah. and tell them it's your track, yeah. So their perception will change completely and they will probably okay. won't even listen to it. And if they listen, they will say like, oh, somebody's trying to be off extreme or uh, somebody's trying to be experimental or whatever. So uh, like our mind is working that way. You have this pre-judgment already when yeah. you hear the name. Yeah, 100%. And it's interesting because you mentioned Apex Twin, which is a very good example. And he released at least two times, he, he put up a new SoundCloud uh, username. Yeah. He released an album. Somehow people spotted him. Who knows how? Who knows why? Anyways, I remember um, there was a, um, an example of, I think it was a, it was a piano, very, very famous pianist, like a piano player, that um, yeah. put up a piano, an electric piano in the middle of a street. And he started playing piano. And he was super famous, but like he, he didn't advertise that. So we kind of like he, he was hiding himself, like you, just yeah. to understand whether people would stop because the yeah. music was good or people wouldn't yeah. give shit because yeah. they thought it was like worthless. Yeah. And eventually uh, there was a, he kind of did it as a social experiment. And then I think there was like one or two people who stopped. One because it, one person really liked the music and the other person because it recognized him. Yeah. And everybody else, thought fuck it you know like it was the shit you know Crazy. Yeah, this is this is a problem of the society i guess that the, we prejudge everything we have filters before the information goes to your brain you already build up your filters and uh with these kind of concepts you i mean it was a lot before in uh, especially in techno that somebody yeah. would uh release something with uh uh but it's getting less and less. And I think this was kind of like part of this do-it-yourself culture thing. And uh, it got changed with its marketing drive and thing because if, if everything builds up on your gigs and on your uh, being famous, then of course it doesn't make sense to release something without the name. Of course, yeah. So, but uh, of course, there are like a lot of people who really, really wants to enjoy the music without prejudgment. Yeah. So I think that 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 was uh, the, the main reason. Also, like these are all kinds of like small thoughts we already had when we started the Stahl. Like we never thought about uh, making a releases because we started to do it uh, after like the third year, actually. Um, because then we, we started to have like regular parties and uh, also third year, it was the first year where we could save a bit money to release something. Uh, but this everything was some kind of like somewhere in your brain, uh, this like, you know, swims in your brain, like, okay, this could work this way and that could work that way, but not the precise ideas, I want to do that or I want to do this, but uh, just to open your mind and think like, okay, what kind of possibilities this concept gives you. Yeah. And, uh, then it worked pretty good. I mean, I think uh, this this year we had like fifth release and uh, we always have a good feedback. Like uh, there is 
uh, on every release, there was one person releasing very first time, I think, at least on the vinyl. By, by choice? For your choice or just happened? Um, well, it happened, but of course, uh, uh, of course, first you get a lot of, lot of uh, material. Yeah. This is also sometimes very, um, I, I feel uncomfortable asking people to send me tracks and then maybe you don't use it in a compilation because uh, compilation should make sense. Yeah. It's not just like randomly put tracks. And every time when you put something together, you have certain idea of it. I cannot, uh, I'm not good in, uh, in uh, explaining that because it's some kind of like feelings or uh, it's something like making a DJ set. You yeah. make a selection of something and you make a pre-selection and then you select from this pre-selection while you work on the mix, right? Yeah. And it's the same with the, with the making compilation. And sometimes it's weird to ask somebody like, hey, can you send me some tracks? I want to do a compilation, but I cannot guarantee that I will put it on the, on the compilation. Oh, yeah. it sounds weird, but when you explain why you do that, uh, then uh, it's better for the artist because you don't want to be put somewhere where it doesn't make sense. Yeah. It's the same with, uh, with some artists where, where they book you not because of your music and your DJ skills, but because of something else, like whatever, the agency or uh, some personal relationship or something. Uh, so I don't want to play somewhere where people don't want to hear my music yeah. and they just invite you just a part of the something. It's yeah. the same, I, you don't have to be released on some compilation just because uh, you as a person maybe uh, are interesting, but like music don't fit the compilation, you know? Not really. it's, it's, it's interesting because I think the, there are two considerations. One is that the, I think if you as an artist have made some hits, some music that is widely recognized, yeah. then it almost becomes an anchor for people who choose you. So it's yeah. harder for you if you kind of moved away from that kind of style. Yeah, exactly. There is there's also like this, this uh, big problem, like uh, if you don't think like, for example, when I start to make music, I don't know what it will be like yeah. at the end. Is it like a techno track or like sometimes you, you have some idea of like some ambient uh, atmospheric thing and then you end up with like a banger uh -huh. and other way around because this is a process and in this process like you have some ideas but then while you work on this idea you go somewhere else so i mean there are like people they only do one certain thing and they are perfect in that nothing's wrong with it but uh it will be sad if you stuck in that even though you would love to do something else. But that's why I, from the beginning on, when I uh, was doing like solo projects, I don't care. I don't care if the EP will be ambient at the end or it will be for the dance floor. If it has certain drum structures to call it like electro or industrial or uh, four to floor. So, these kind of things are on the second. The second, second point to consideration. Second yeah. point. Yeah. First yeah. is like Sorry. what you want to do. And uh, I mean, I don't have any problem with any kind of genre and music as long as it's good. I mean, yeah. there is also like, if somebody will ask me like what kind of music you don't listen, probably it will be country and reggae and uh, like everything in, in the, this dub direction, which is like reggae kind of like influence thing. Mm. But even there, you can find amazing music. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And, and also like that, that music, even if you don't like it or you wouldn't make it, it might inspire you, your music, right? Exactly, exactly. Something there, maybe like tonality, how things, get together and also we don't even know like unless you are a scientist and you analyze everything uh, which is also very difficult but 
you don't know exactly how your brain uh, uh, saves things. Because once I had this uh, very interesting experience, I was driving bike and some kind of like track came into my mind. Uh -huh. And I loved it so much that I was like, okay, driving bike, maybe like 20 minutes. And I was repeating it that I wanted to come home and start to work on this. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to make exactly one-to-one -one the same thing I had in my head. So that's why I started to like, okay, 20 minutes, it was going in my head. I came home, I started to to put the stuff in, uh, in the synthesizer, the sequences and steps. And I end up with different things because uh, while I was working, this melody and this track disappeared in my head. But I was very happy with the, with the result. So after that, next day, I was like, I want to go back to this melody and to this track. So it came back to my mind, but at the same time, I was listening to the set of my friend. I was listening last few days and found out that the one track I had in my mind, it was one of the tracks he played in the set and I really liked it. Wow. So if I would do exactly one-to-one -one the same thing, I would not remember that I already know this. Yeah. So if it happens with the whole track, right? It can happen to simple melodies or the harmonies you hear in a completely different track. And maybe you, your brain reconstructs that while you work on something. So this is a the, the very big process. Of course, at the same time, you analyze uh, things. And if it was very obvious, maybe in one or two weeks, you will realize that. Yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. But uh, it's interesting because the uh, human brain is very interesting thing, like how we save things and how we get it back yeah. to our consciousness. And uh, yes, indeed, the, 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 let's say the presence of conscious and subconscious is also very interesting because like a lot of stuff, most of the stuff gets in, buried in the subconscious and then it gets pulled up in the conscious uh, and you don't even realize that. You don't even realize how, how this uh, structure works. Yeah, and uh, that's why I think music is very, uh, very democratic hmm. way of art uh, and also very accessible because um, even abstract music is uh, more accessible than abstract painting. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because probably we hear all the time and uh, your ear is more used to uh, different sounds than other senses because uh, for example the taste uh, a lot of things you didn't eat and you don't you don't know the taste of it right or the smell some things we are programmed that it's oh it smells terrible yeah. But there is not that many things you would say, oh, this sounds terrible because, of course, this exists as well, like that our brain cannot uh, uh, deal with it. But there are not that much things to compare to smell or taste that you would say like, oh, this sounds terrible because your brain is more uh, trained yeah, yeah, yeah. to listen yeah. to different things because we confronted it with every day, like the noise, uh, the, 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 some different, different, uh, uh, yeah, sometimes it's very loud, sometimes very, uh, uh, uh smooth, but yeah, your yeah. brain is always getting it. It's always, it's super interesting because the, and there is a lot of stuff that then gets thrown in, into our dreams. When we dream about stuff that we make some weird connection we think are weird by just it's predominantly stuff that we have observed experienced sensed in the last couple of weeks that comes under another form which yeah. is more reason that we just associate for some reason so very interesting uh, I, I it's fascinating to see like how the brain our brain works it's a very complex yeah. machine uh, and beautiful as well like uh, with a lot of good stuff with this thing
Um, yeah. When you when you get into the studio for when you make your own music, how do you so? First of all, is it important for you to have some sort of inspiration or you just make music and then inspiration comes? Uh, no, I have to have some inspiration, at least a motivation. And motivation comes from inspiration, I think. Right. At <laughs> least for me. And uh, because I cannot just like get out of the bed, have a coffee and sit down and make music. Like uh, something in my uh, brain or emotionally should tell me like okay now i wanna do this mm. and mostly it happens at night wow so you make music at night or you get inspired at night and then mostly i do uh, the, the main things i do at night i think uh it's more quiet like the the earth is relaxing somehow you get this energy of like okay it's like everybody's sleeping or everybody's going to sleep and now it's time to make like uh, some kind of uh, research yeah 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 yeah. And, uh, mm, yeah for example yesterday i um i i think i started around like midnight for one hour or one and a half hour i was kind of happy then I went to bed and watched some something and then I could not sleep and I was like, wait a minute, I want to hear it again. So I got up, listened to it like and changed a little bit and was listening maybe like half hour in the loop. And today in the morning when I got up, I, I listened to it. Um, it's almost done actually, uh -huh. but I want to listen it to it like tonight as well and if I'm happy tonight I will uh I will make a export the the the, the preview and it will stay there for weeks and months and I will go back to this over and over again and I'll... this is good yeah then it's ready to release got it and it, it... When do you feel the track is ready? So it's because as producers, we always look at our music and listen to it. And we're like, "Fuck, this sucks." I would need to change. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think this is uh, this is uh, for example when people ask me if if my uh, uh, profession, like uh, I studied architecture and design, and also worked as a designer and architect, I think that helps a lot to to decide when something is finished because huh. it's a creative process and uh, of course when you have a deadline you have to finish till the deadline but um, you have to make decisions when you want to stop because in the one sound you can work on one one single sound you can work your entire life yeah for sure you can find the uh, like sequences and uh, the, the 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 tiny things in the se sequences and frequencies and whatever you can work on it nonstop, and yeah. this is a process. But also at the same time, with your experience, you will realize like okay, this part. I can work one more month, but it won't be better. Yeah, exactly. And as I say, like the, the, the options are infinite. Like, uh -huh. is there a, a, like you, it, it's more up to us to decide this is finished, you know, <laughs> that's it. Yeah. yeah. So I, I actually like to, to, to make my own rules. Like, for example, yesterday I only used uh, uh, Blofeld, Waldorf, because I had this idea of like some uh, some arpeggio which is going there, then changing this arpeggio, make it from two bars to three bars, and then they loop in a different way. Then you make like something in a five bars, and then it gives a different uh, uh, hypnotic vibe to it, and and that was just like one synthesizer. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. But if you go with with that arpeggio to two other synthesizers, maybe it will get too much, and you 
you are lost in uh, in the possibilities. But I think there, I, I, I can say that my profession helped me in that thing because at the end, the process is the same. For sure, yeah. yeah, yeah. You try different things and you have to end up with uh, like, maybe you make a, a sketch of like one idea, but this idea can be like, have 20 or 2000 different ways how you yeah. how you make it but with your experience you know okay it doesn't make sense let's let's focus on this yeah and yeah for sure yeah. and it, the, it reminds yeah. me a few few weeks ago we interviewed uh, Manny D and and one thing yeah. that he said is like uh, a lot of creativity spurs from uh, limitations so when you limit yourself yeah. to something that's when yeah. you get very creative yeah, yeah. And I, I saw on your, uh, sorry, you, you wanted to say something? Yeah. No, no. Um. <laughs> and, and we went over the wrap up. Um, I, I saw on your Instagram that you took so weeks of music to relax. Well, I, I, I listen to music, but I'm not just uh, like, uh, mm, I like to have uh, breaks in general. Like sometimes when I had like every weekend a gig and then there was like two weekends, no gigs. I was really happy because then I recharge my brain uh, because I want to redefine myself. Even maybe you play a lot of same tracks, maybe, uh, which I try not to do, but, uh, but to inspire yourself to have a different attitude or to build up something in a different way. Without that, I think I will get bored. Yes. Like, because... I don't think that between every weekend, if you do it like uh, months, you don't, you don't have enough time to rethink what you have done before, what you want to do in the future. I also want to have like at least a few key new records, new, it can be also a very old one, which I didn't play maybe like a few years. Uh, because then while you play you are uh, you have this something in mind and like okay i want to play that track but before i go there i have to build up the atmosphere or in intensity before that and if if i don't have this kind of like uh, uh mind map where i want to go and what i what is the key uh and these key tracks doesn't have to be like something uh emotionally uh, crazy thing or some some uh, hits or uh, whatever it can be like totally normal thing but you got inspired from that like really normal uh, probably uh, for many people it doesn't say anything but you put in a context which gives the the life so yeah. For that, I always need a time. So I have to dig deeper to find something new or start to check my uh, uh, collection to find something like, oh, there was something and uh, why don't I play these? So I think that the, the DJ sets is uh, also a different, different way how I deal with it. Like yeah. I, I have to be inspired. If I don't inspire it, that... But this inspiration can come five minutes before your set as yes. well. Yeah, for sure. Or while you're playing. Yeah. 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 It's really interesting. And, and I think it's a good segue to, uh, we're really going to the wrap up, last couple of questions, and then I'll let yeah. you <laughs> yeah. enjoy your Saturday. The, so we have a tradition at, 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 in the interviews. We are asking uh, um, our guests to tell us like one question that we should ask to our next guest. Yeah. Okay. You can imagine there is a question for you after that. <laughs> okay, okay. So the next, for the next guest, I would say, uh, what is your secret weapon? It doesn't mean, it doesn't have to be track. It doesn't have to be a, a producer or the label. Just a secret weapon. As a person, what is what is a secret weapon you can use when the situation is difficult or something went wrong or 
you want to charm somebody uh is it your smile is it your intelligence is it your uh, inspiration is it just a secret weapon I, i love that yeah. i love that i think yeah. you you can you can pick up so much from that answer you know that from that question yeah. very interesting and so um then i have the question for you and it, yeah. since our last guests were two people so there is one question that is what is your favorite sandwich feeling sandwich feeling what do you put inside the the perfect sandwich for you uh perfect sandwich would be for sure cheese because cheese is my favorite thing i think uh uh-huh. um yeah it must be really good cheese and everything else i don't know some good tomatoes and uh uh for sure good olive oil if if i'm in italy Yes. Um, yeah, I think I think that cheese. Yeah. Cheese like Italian pepper. sandwich. Yeah. Nice. And and, yeah. and the other and the other question is uh, as a DJ, what is your guilty pleasure? What is a track that maybe you would love to play but you never played because you think it doesn't fit in the context? I have few tracks which um which are very very uh special for me maybe they are not that weird but i don't want to play them if the atmosphere is not exactly the right atmosphere for that yeah uh and it happened that i took that records many many times with me but there was not that many sets i played them Okay. So these are one is uh of course Stanislav Tokachev um it was released on uh Mike Parker's label um but I don't remember it's something like vertical uh, let me check for yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. there is a blue mood no Blue Mood I released by myself but and I I play it a lot but uh Gear of Phone is my Parker's label there is Oh yeah you released it wow yes I love that track by him yeah So there is this one track wow yeah uh not the heartbeat there must be another one on let me check band camp like fuck yeah was it uh huh almost there yeah yeah no worries Yeah. So it's like uh Stanislav Tolkachov the right side of hell right side of hell okay and the right down Yeah and uh and Robert Hood minus Robert Hood yeah So these are two tracks especially Robert Hood minus because it's a big hit it was one of the like uh the the uh the main uh, minimal techno highlights of 90s mm. uh, and to be honest i don't really like that much of other robert hood stuff yeah but minus is uh exceptionally good yeah and i don't want to use it when there is no exact the right moment to play uh minus yeah. of robert hood have you ever played it or you waiting for the moment No, I played them both, but uh, just just a few times. There've been there've been uh more in my record bag than uh I played them, yeah. like 10 times more probably. But I don't think that I have anything I would love to play but I could not dare to play. Right. Yeah. Because everybody I wanted to play I managed to play. It's a great thing, yeah. 
Okay, yeah, so I mean, because because uh, sometimes you play opening set and maybe if it's too too weird or too uh, trippy or something, you still can put it in a, in a different context. Or if I play like a very, very long sets, then uh, which is my favorites actually, yeah. then uh, uh, you have enough time to bring people to there yeah. And uh, give them even like three minutes of some drones. Yeah. Because you have time. You can, you know, you don't need yeah. to rush into stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I think, I mean, this has been a great thing. And one more question is like, what are your next projects? What are you working on? What is a. So, next projects, uh, as I told you, the, the, on the label, it's this uh, Chiki's Baby Bye with Stanislav Tolkach uh, remix. Yeah. So, it will be out in two and a half weeks. Nice. Yeah. Um, then... That, that's uh, on an intergalactic uh, research institute. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So, then my album is uh, almost ready. I don't know when it will be released, but I'm talking with the labels now and uh, checking the possibilities and uh, their schedules and their interests, like uh, um, depending on the album, maybe uh, there will be like changes in the cover or a little bit of concept or like choose one or another track more than the others. So that's the basically the the main projects and the one thing with Mikhailo and Georgia we are gonna do it probably will be like more more contemporary classic let's let's call it this way like maybe something between ambient and even pop and uh and home listening stuff so yeah. this is what I'm doing and right now. Uh, yeah very much looking forward to hearing that uh, so Mikhailo is your Georgian friend who, for people who don't know him, is a, you've been working together for a while and he was uh, in prison for, for quite a few, yeah. uh, few months. Yeah. Yeah. And so then, he was in prison six years? Wow, yeah. For okay. having like few grams of MDMA with him and uh, the, the drug policy in Georgia is like crazy. Yeah. And he had a chance to, to produce there and he learned how to produce there. Yeah. And now since few months he's uh, in house arrest so he can be at home with his family and working there. And we've done one EP while he was in in prison. Yeah. So I was sending his wife the recordings and uh she was bringing that with USB stick and the back and this is how we done that and now uh he asked me if we want to do a full length album and so we will work on that. It's amazing, yeah. Looking forward to hearing that. Uh, I'll, I'll make sure I'll put the, the links in the show notes. And, and of course, when you when you have the your album, your solo album out, I want to know. So we, yeah. <laughs> we can yeah. put the link out there. As soon as, as I have like uh, the masters, I will uh, send to some friends and uh, they yeah, can yeah. all it. Amazing, yes. Man, I mean, this has been a pleasure. Thanks so much for Thank you. spending time with us. It's been a great fun. Yeah, for me too. Nice. And hopefully we will see each other again. In, uh, yeah, I hope that. I hope that. Like everybody I'm talking with, it's like, just because you don't know how long it will take, Yeah, it's already like really crazy. Like, okay, uh, you miss people, like you miss uh, friends all around the world and uh, we don't even know when it will be possible to, no. to see each other. It, your family, but... it will be very soon. I hope so too. Is your family in Georgia? Yeah. 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 I, I, can you, if you wanted to, can you go there? Can you fly there and fly back to Germany? I think there are like some special uh, flights, mm -hmm. but I don't think that uh, without a proper reason, I don't think that you can, like you cannot say, I just want to visit my family and fly there. Yeah. So if you, um, it's only for the people who had maybe like certain amount of time to stay in Europe or something and they have to go back or the other way around. Mm -hmm. So they're like, I think once in a week, there is like one flight to go, yeah. Something like that. I, I don't even know exactly, but there is like very strict regulations. And uh, I don't know if um, next few months 
even if I wanted to, I don't know if I'm able to to go there. Yeah. Especially people don't travel because of these like uh, restrictions of like 14 days staying somewhere. Right. So yeah. unless you really go there for a few months and want to stay there, I don't think that there is uh, any chance to yeah. 